All right, this morning I got a message from a viewer who uh, was watching my video called Tax Incidents, Another Example. There's a little screenshot from it over here. And uh, the comment was, show me the algebra with a lot of exclamation points. And so, okay, uh, sometimes I take it for granted um, that you've either been in my class or you've, you've seen the algebra worked out. So here, let's work out the algebra for this example real quickly. And we're going to do two things. First, we're going to look at these, uh, this demand curve, P equals 12 minus 0.5Q, and this supply curve, P equals Q. So here's what those look like on a graph. And we're going to solve for the equilibrium price and quantity. And then I'm going to show you how to solve for the two equilibrium prices uh, after the tax is put on and the new equilibrium quantity. And so um, if we have these two equations to solve them for equilibrium, uh, since both of these things are equal to P and there's only one equilibrium price here, then all we do is we take... Uh, the right hand side, since P equals Q and it also equals 12 minus 0.5Q, then we can simply um, set those equal to each other. 12 minus 0.5Q equals Q. So I'm just setting these two, two equations equal to each other. And then we can move, you know, add 0.5Q to both sides. And so then we're going to equal have a 12 equals 1.5Q. And then that is going to give us an equilibrium quantity of 8. So Q equals 8. And once we know the equilibrium quantity is here at 8, then what we want to do is insert that quantity of 8 into either one of these two equations here to see what the equilibrium price is. And this looks like the easiest one because on the supply curve P equals Q, that tells us that P is equal to $8. Okay, simple enough. Now, um, what happens after we put this tax on? Let me move this up a little bit here. Now we have um, basically three equations. Let me show you what those two equations look like. I'm going to try to be very precise in what I'm doing here. Uh, since I had a request for the, for the algebra here. Uh, here, the demand curve is still 12 minus 0.5Q. Supply is P equals Q. But technically what's going on when you have a tax is that there are two prices. So there is a price that the demanders pay. Let me put uh, oh, a little subscript here, PD. And we have a price that the suppliers get to keep. I'll put a little subscript there, PS, the price the suppliers get to keep. And what's the relationship between those? Well, uh, you can just say that the price the demanders pay is equal to the price the suppliers are going to get to keep plus $6. Because there's this wedge that the tax drives between the price the demanders pay and the price the suppliers get to keep. So whatever the price the suppliers get to keep after the tax is paid, add 6 to that, and that's the price that the consumers are actually paying. So it's like we have three equations and three unknowns. <clears throat> if you want to get uh, kind of be technical about it, uh, I usually just think about it as um, more like I described in the video, where you can either take the demand curve and shift it down six or, or take the supply curve and shift it up six. But technically, this is the algebra behind uh, what we're doing in the graph. So what do we do? Well, uh, what I would do here is just say, well, let's do start doing some substitution. Uh, the demanded price uh, that the consumers will pay is the supplier's price plus six. OK, so what we can do is substitute um, here, where we see the demand price, substitute the supplier's price plus 6. And now, if we want to set these two equations equal to each other, we have a little bit of work to do before we can do that. Uh, we need to get the um, supplier's price alone here uh, on the left side. So I would go ahead and subtract 6 from both sides of this equation. So we're going to be left with just the supplier's price equals 6. 
minus 0.5q. I just subtracted 6 from both sides there. And what I have done is basically shifted the y-intercept of the demand curve down by 6 units. Now if we set these two equations equal to each other, it will give us the supplier's price. So we have on one side 6 equal uh, minus 0.5q equals q. And just like what we did before, we can add the 0.5q to both sides. We get 6 equals 1.5q. And if we divide both sides by 1.5, we get 6 divided by 1.5 equals 4. So q equals 4. So the new equilibrium quantity is 4. Now what we, we can do is plug that 4 back into either equation, but this equation is, uh, is easy to look at. So that tells us that the supplier's price that they get to keep after the tax is paid is also equal to 4. And the consumer's price they're going to pay is $6 higher. And you know, we could use this equation right here in order to get that. So uh, the uh, demander's price or the consumer's price, whatever you want to call it here, is going to be $10. So I hope that gave you a little bit more concrete look at how the math works in a tax incidence problem. If you have any other questions about this kind of thing, just shoot me an email.